Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see that we've already done anesthetic on our patient and we've placed our rubber dam. So the next thing we're going to do is do our access prep. So we would have a much bigger hole, but because this is a Dexter, it's a little bit harder to drill through. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our endo explorer. Remember our endo explorer has two ends on it. And we're going to put our endo explorer down inside of the tooth to make sure that we can get into each canal. And in this molar, it's tooth number 31, would be three canals. So now that we have that, um, Beth is going to give me a 10 file. And we're going to take our 10 file and put it into our canal. And this is our files. And then I am going to take a 15 file. Preferably not one that's completely bent. Put it down into another canal. And a 20 file. Because I can't drill into the dexter, into the um, root of the tooth, So right now, we have three files in our tooth. And this would be the time that we would take one of the x-rays. So our first x-ray, we would take off our frame and put our sensor underneath here, and then we would take our x-ray. Now we have our working lengths. So at our working lengths, we would be using the thumb ruler, which is right here, and we would measure the um, facial, mesial facial canal is at, is at 20 millimeters. So you can see that that's how the doctor is going to measure. So I'm gonna give this back to Beth. And our distal facial canal is at 20 millimeters. And our distal lingual canal is at 20 millimeters. So we would file this whole tooth at 20 millimeters. So let's say that we have filed everything out. We've gone down to each canal. And now we are going to, we are going to irrigate. So Beth is going to give me the irrigating solution. And remember, the irrigating solution is sodium hypochloride, which is bleach and water. And we're going to suck it all up into all three canals. And then I'll give this back to Beth. We're going to dry this off. And now we are going to do paper points. So if you can just give me the paper points, open the box, and there you go. So each one of the paper points will be taken out, put inside the canal, and dried. And I will give Beth back the paper points. And we would do this with the paper points until the canal is completely dry. Two, must be Tuesday. All right, so we are dry. So now we are going to get our master gutta percha. So because we filed at 20 millimeters, we need to at least have a 20 gutta percha. 
So Beth is going to give me the first gutta percha. And the gutta percha is the rubber-like material, if you remember. We're going to put our gutta percha into all the canals. And then Beth, you're going to light the torch. And I'm going to light, it doesn't really light. It's okay. I'm going to light the torch. This would heat up my instrument. The instrument goes down inside the canal and it will burn off the top part of the gutta percha. And now we have all the canals filled and our next thing that we're going to do is put in a cotton pellet. So we would put our cotton pellet inside of our tooth and then we will put in cavit or composite or amalgam. It just kind of depends on the doctor what they use. This cavit is like so dried out that it doesn't want to come out of the tube, but it's okay. So we would take our cavit or composite and amalgam, pack it down inside of the tooth. And now our endo is completed. So the first thing we have to do first is take off our rubber dam. And you're going to fit this in, pull this off and out of the patient's mouth. So now that our patient can finally close after about an hour and a half of treatment, we are going to use our articulating paper, have our patient bite down, ground, grind around. And you can see that it is a little bit high. So what we would do is take our high speed handpiece and adjust it. The root canal tooth always has to be adjusted at least a millimeter shorter than it would be. Because as you can see in this, if this tooth was not adjusted, every time the patient bit down or slid their teeth together, they would be hitting on that corner. And if they did that, it has a bruise-like effect is what happens. And so we wouldn't want the patient to be in more discomfort. So we would take this tooth number 31 out of occlusion altogether so that they weren't even biting on it. Because remember, we're going to put on a crown anyway. So it doesn't matter if this tooth is shorter. Then we would give our post-op instructions to our patient after the bite adjustment has been done and send them on their way with their next appointment in two to three weeks. And that's how you do a root canal procedure.